this is probably one of the most uh, strange graftings uh, I ever did. Maybe the most stupid one. How did it uh, come in my mind? I never knew. But uh, it all started in Japan. And uh, this grafting was actually in Kaneko's garden. And when he said this will work together, I would say, I don't know, because this is a Japanese quince underneath. And this is uh, a Crategus, a red Crategus. So when he took the young seedlings of the red Crategus planted in all around, he gave some new roots on this Crategus. When this was rooted, he had the perfect size of this quince. So the whole process, I follow the whole process and I say, well, uh, from that moment I say, okay, if this is working, I'm going to take that tree back home to Belgium and start from there. <laughs> so this is the whole story. When I brought it back, it was already grafted. You can see it on the pictures clearly, the difference in size. So it was really strange to see when this is chopped off and it was fitting perfectly on the lower part of the Japanese quince. After three years, I could take the tree to Belgium. It could be transported and it was strongly and healthy and it was growing. So uh, one of my students was so impressed and he bought this tree from me. In the meantime, there were some roots that didn't took the graft. So it was strongly so I, I was, I said, oh, oh, I, I sold this now to, to a student of mine. And so this happened, I said, no worry, it's going to be something special. So we let it rotten off, the roots that didn't take it, and another part took it on. So we need to do some carving to make the dead branches because there was a, a part died off, including the roots. And we, we need to do some carving work to make it uh, again as a more natural tree. So now we are about, uh, I think, 18 years further or 20 years further of uh, <laughs> development. And we have our old tree on the life vein of this red hawthorn and also here on this red hawthorn and underneath it is the roots and the trunk of uh, a Japanese quince. So this is actually the, the whole story of the most strange grafting that I was involved with uh, so closely, but I'm not did the job, I was just close by when it all happened. But still, I'm happy that the tree is still here in good health, is still in the hands of my students. He has now really had the most special tree, so delicate, so, you see, with, with all this dead wood, uh, he's every year so afraid, oh, this, this piece is going to fall off. I say, well, if it is falling off, look what you have still left over. It stays always something special. Whatever happened with that tree, <laughs> it cannot be worse. It's always improving something. You have always another tree. Because those two things are so special together. And you will see on the pictures also the tree in full, flower, in full bloom, in full flower. So it is really exceptional. So this is one of the most special graftings I was ever involved with. Beautiful, eh? I just like it. So those are those typical Kazari trees. Give it a, a special reason to make this, to, to bring two, two kind of trees together. <laughs> uh, I saw this from in the time with my father and I'm exactly the same. I want to try things out. And I was luckily in Japan in, in the best gardens to do this because those guys in the time, they were experimenting all the time. I saw such a crazy things 
uh, and they succeed in mainly 50-60% of all these strange uh, tryouts and yeah, this is an exceptional thing. Great. So this is another uh, graft I did. Originally uh, this larix came uh, from uh, Walter Paul and he was uh, up in the mountains and the tree was so heavy to bring him down that he had to throw him down. So the tree had uh, nearly no branches here underneath. He was just uh, in the apex with four or five branches and that was it. So I grafted here this whole section. So I grafted actually one larix young plant of five, six years old in a container. So uh, with this graft, I was just carved with my samurai tool as deep as the thickness of the, of the plant, kept it in and I nailed it in the trunk. Then I closed it off and this is another type of grafting. So we talk about now uh, something that I did uh, more than 15 years ago. And now it's the first time that I wired this whole branch system. So I didn't select anything, just uh, inside a little bit and I used everything. Uh, with the graft now, I'm going to change the front a little bit. I have now more roots here underneath, new roots, and I can shorten it in, in the back with a longer uh, root. So it's more about the graft actually that makes the result. But in that time I made one of my mistakes that I realize now. I have a Larix decidua here, so my young plant <laughs> is Larix leptolepis. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that makes it again now special because I have the two types of larix on one tree but that, that was by mistake and uh, finally there were so many options with that tree that I say okay if I keep the lower part and then I make a dead wood with the upper part as a tangent with everything on it. That was one option, but still I love it like it is, you know. And uh, the reason why I put the graft on was actually I want to make a small tree. And this I'm gonna layer off. With, with Larix it was also something, I never tried it and I should try it. So this was the tree that I said, okay, I'm gonna layer this off and I have my lower tree and I only need one branch to make my powerful young tree with that. So all these options I struggled with now the last 15 years. And I cannot make my choice because I have such a big, beautiful collection with big trees that I say, okay, man, it is unique piece. Why should you do all this when you have this result and you can tell this story about Leptolepis and Decidua, two types of larix on one tree. So this uh, white crotagus uh, had already a long uh, history. It was way before uh, all the people from uh, the UK came over with their famous hawthorns. Uh, before that, we here in the lowlands, we have to find this at a farmer's place somewhere in a corner. And this is how we find our crategus then. So not with this spectacular movement, it was just one clump with a few branches. From there, I start this, it must be something like 30 years ago. So uh, the first tiling 
with all the branches I had. The, the next styling was with a little bit longer branch, um, also to let this become thicker because it was a start with nothing. And finally I uh, created uh, in a very short time, that means uh, in about seven or eight years time, my first silhouette ready for exhibition. This tree was then uh, at uh, the third Ginkgo Award, uh, presented already as well developed in that time frame, because now it should be not okay, but then it was top material. Um, and after that uh, I've sold this tree to uh, one of my students. And it was the tree of one of my students and we keep it in under my guidance to build this further up. Uh, till last week uh, that I let my student know actually it should be fine if I have the tree back and he was willing to, <laughs> to sell it again to me and now it is again my tree. So now I have a new project with this tree uh, because if it is in the hands of one of my students and I have to explain what I wanted to do with it, uh, most of the time most of the people don't find it worth because it's a nice tree and why should we do all that? Uh, but the next start for uh, the next project of this tree is now I want to finish him completely off. And I have a couple of options. I can do graft uh, with buds, only with the eyes, only with, with the buds. And I want to make the white colored flowers, mix it with red ones. So I'm going to add or graft some buds on the ramification branches. And I'm going to put some red eyes in the middle. So that means that I'm, I did this before uh, with a tree and I sold this to Manfred Roth in Germany. So, uh, but this was a two colored tree and I want to have this again, but you cannot buy this, you have to make this yourself. I also can do this with uh, another type of grafting that I take from the red ones, branches of that size and I can graft it here on the side and give it another ramification. So it is a matter of working with branches or working with good buds, because when I'm working with the buds, the red eyes of the, the red one, I need actually buds of that size, you know, that small they has to be, it has to be growing buds. Because if I take the bigger ones, they are not growing, they are just opening and give a flower and that's it. So I need to select good branches with strong buds that assure me that they are going to grow. Those I can use eh, as a ramification branch with a nice other color. So this is the next step of grafting. This is not the season to do that now. Normally we do that type of uh, grafting in August middle September, depending on the weather, but this is perfect. And then I can put as much as red buds all over the tree as I want. It is something that you don't see actually that it's done, because you just go underneath uh, and you put the, the, the eye and it's open it. The, the mark that you make is closed in a couple of months. You will not see it after two years, it's gone completely. And it grows a, a branch out of it with another color and this is the whole meaning. For the rest I want to let this tree now start to grow normal. So finished with all the guide wires. I'm going to remove them all forever. So all the branches now, they're coming down and open and now I want to let them grow normal. So they're gonna come back a little bit and now I'm gonna create this normal character. So I'm gonna do two things with that tree. That is the grafting that I have my two colors and let the branches now become in a normal structure 
like a hawthorn can grow. So with what we did in the past, bend them down, we have this character of this branches, not a straight line, you know, these are all movements and old characters in it. It looks like the branches that you find in an old Yamadori, no straight lines. And now if we stop with, pull this down, it comes back slowly and it comes back upwards. So I think in a couple of years, this tree is going to look more natural. And if we are lucky and he's flowering, because the white ones flowering a little bit earlier than the red ones. So stops flowering, starts flowering. This is what we're going to have. It's going to be exciting. Another project, I'm looking forward to do it. It's all about grafting. It's all about doing things. So if you uh, are interested in grafted, there is so much possible. Eye grafting, branch grafting, uh, with own branches of the tree grafting. So whatever, as long as you take the right season. The most important tip about all this grafting thing is when you put the grafts on it, you place the tree somewhere as long as it takes to connect. Don't replace it. Be sure, if you do this, that he is protected from frost, from winter, from wind, all exceptional weather circumstances, that this is done. Because if you just put it back in the garden and then, oh, it's going to freeze and you take it back inside or you do something, it's all too much. Every time that this connection is moving a little bit, it takes longer to make it contact. So you put it in a place, protect it, leave it there till you show, okay, it's working. And then you give it another month. Let it grow, it's well connected, and then you can place it wherever you want. But most of the grafts, it goes wrong in the time that they are healing. So that is uh, replacing or touching or I'm, I'm, I'm curious and you remove the tape and you want to show and no. Let the tree show, okay, it's working and then it's ready. It can be six months, a year, sometimes two years before you see the result, but this is his place. I have done trees that growing with the roots through the holes underneath, they were stuck two years there, but successfully. This is the best tip I can give to everybody that wants to do this. Leave them alone as long as it takes.